Hello from the Dukas Copy TV studio in Geneva. We are talking about business opportunities in India for small and mid-sized enterprises from Switzerland with Mr. Christoph Sievers. He is founder of Sievers Development. Welcome to the studio, Mr. Thank Sievers. Thank you, Mr. Schwenge. So, uh, if we highlight India, so you are an expert on India, you have uh, really a lot of experience, professional experience there. So there has been a euphoric expectation for the industry in uh, India, for the development, also its associated investments, but it has been a little disappointing uh, in the uh, recent uh, government for the Congress party. Now there is a new government with Mr. Modi in place. So do you think that this government is able to liberalize the framework and also relaunch capital investments into India? Well, um, India is a democracy. And one says if you like a disciplined workforce, you go to China. If you want a, a workforce with a lot of ideas, you go to India. So the framework as such is already very broad, it's very demanding. Now, of course, you have a, a big political and bureaucratical uh, setup in India with 1.25 billion people being the biggest nation in the world. And India basically is a continent, it's not a country, uh, easily said or easily understood. Modi is from the BHP, which is a, a Hindu movement, a Hindu government, so a little bit of fundamentalist uh, government. And he had a very mixed reputation back in Gujarat when he started, because there were uh, some um, racial tensions between Muslim and Hindu uh, people, mostly uh, with uh, Modi being the, the man in charge of the local government. But he has done a, a brilliant job in liberalizing this little state and uh, has Gujarat is nowadays a showpiece in India for economic development. So when Modi came to the Indian scene and was elected, the industry and the business in general was expecting a, a very large boost into liberalization. Modi has started well, he has stabilized relations with the US, he has gone to China, so he has put a lot of accent on the external side of things, on, ex uh, on external policies. He has started liberalizing at home a little bit, he has uh, liberalized a little bit the tax uh, legislation, he has given insurance companies easier access to investment and he has tried to set up other liberalization moves like uh, making land acquisition more easily feasible as well as also liberalizing um, VAT, so value added tax regime. But he's not yet there. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the perspectives between uh, in change ex uh, exchange relations with Switzerland and India. So uh, can you walk us through the development? Uh, how, is it, how was it then? How is it now with the uh, two countries and their exchanges? Well, Switzerland was always prominent in India. The first uh, company established there was a joint venture between Volkert Brothers and Tata called uh, Voltas back in 1851. Uh, that's when the first people went there. Later on it was founded, this uh, joint venture. And as a matter of fact, my uncle worked there in the middle of the last century. So I always had a special relationship to this place. Swiss companies, nowadays 180 of them, have gone to India to produce for that large market. And you have uh, most of them about 50% plus in the western city of Pune. Pune being a local city in the Maharashtra state of India, western India, not far from Mumbai. And uh, that's why there's a certain concentration there on machinery manufacturing. But you also have a strong impact from pharmaceutical and chemical industries. And some of it is produced there and being shipped back. One fact you have to understand is that there always was much more export into India from Switzerland than import from India to Switzerland, uh, not least being gold. Indian people like gold. What is the role of the free trade agreement between India and Switzerland? The free trade agreement is important for the Swiss because uh, taxation is very heavy in India. So when you are a global manufacturer, which a lot of these firms are, 
and uh, we can take Bucher, we can take Bühler, we can take many others, Burkhardt, Sulzer, ABB. They want to assemble parts of their operations in India and maybe ship it then to other Southeast Asian countries. And if taxation there is very high, it hinders your, your trade. The free trade arrangement, as opposed to China where it is in place, is not yet there. Bec for two reasons. First of all, the Indian side is loath to let their idea of making a workplace in India attractive to Indian people too easily uh, go, uh, go away in the sense that they do not want to liberalize, for example, uh, their generics production too much. They still want to have their, their, um, their hold on their own production in pharmaceuticals. On the Swiss side, the pharmaceutical industry is very much into copyright protection, both pharmaceutical but also watch industries. And one has to be careful in India, an Indian sees copyright as the right to copy, <laughs> which it is not really uh, uh, largely understood. And so, in other words, there has been a tendency that these two sectors have not uh, been able to agree. Whereas machinery manufacturing would very much favor the trade ag ag arrangement because it would give them easier access to the market. Don't forget the currency impact as well. Uh, the Swiss franc has strengthened a lot and the Indian people are looking for cheap products and uh, Swiss products have appreciated by 10 to 15 percent this year alone, which makes it difficult for them to survive. And there are also um, vivid bilateral cooperations with Switzerland and India. For example, there is one initiative by the Swiss government and the Swiss Indian Chamber of Commerce, which is called the VET, Vocational Educational Training. Can you describe this a little bit? Yes, certainly. Indian people have, they're very much into education. A friend once told me, whilst uh, other people may do sports, we get an additional educational um, degree as a pastime. So Indian people like education and they are very interested in the Swiss educational system where we in factories train our people on the spot, on the job. So they learn as apprentice the, the actual physical production of the thing and later on they move on with a parallel uh, theoretical education into their job responsibility. So India has been very impressed by that and about five years ago there was an initiative by the Swiss Indian Chamber of Commerce to, to get that introduced with uh, four firms, four or five firms in Pune, Swiss firms, and this now one hopes can be expanded to other areas. There is another important sector of cooperation besides uh, innovation where the Swiss are interested in uh, contributing to innovation in India, there is the whole clean tech um, initiative which basically aims at cleaning up the environment and making industry more clean. You may imagine that there's a lot of pollution in India from, from various sources and Swiss people, there's a lot of uh, small and medium sized Swiss companies that specialize into clean tech, water protection, water sanitation like for, for example Geberit, then also um, aqua cleaning so all sorts of uh, cleaning the environment uh, initiatives are involved with this. Thank you very much Mr. Christoph Sievers for being here today and for this closer look into Swiss-Indian business relationships. Thank you Mr. Schwenger, it was my pleasure. And thanks for watching. Do make sure to keep clicking back on the Dukas Copy TV website for latest updates and exclusive interviews. Have a great day and see you next time.